The 10.1.5 patch made some huge waves in the meta, or maybe not, because Boomkin is still suffering from success. Anyway, after this week's tuning, you might be wondering if Holy Pallies are going to still reign supreme, or if we expect to see even more lizards in the arena. Today, we're going to break down all those winners and losers from the patch and the recent wave of hotfixes, including some specs that might be going a little bit under the radar. Now, before we get into it, we want to take a moment to remind you of the 400 rating gain guarantee that's only available at skillcap.com. That's right. For as low as $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you're going to see rating gains. And if you don't, then you're going to get a full refund and there's no questions asked. Now, with a subscription to Skillcapped, you gain access to class guides that are going to guide you step by step on how to deal rank one level damage and how to survive and crowd control just like those pros that you watch over at Twitch. Now, we also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcapped members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. Now, this feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals in recent months. So if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. But for now, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off with our two melee winners who've seen the biggest upward swing in the midseason meta. Windwalker Monk has kicked and punched its way to the S tier in recent weeks. And this is due to the huge spread of buffs directly aimed at Monk defensives, including Fortifying Brew, Dampen Harm, and Touch of Karma. Windwalker Monks were already pretty good in solo shuffle, doing an exceptional amount of damage, especially during Serenity windows where Rising Sun Kick was cranking out some pretty brutal damage. But the only problem was that Windwalkers weren't really bulky enough to consistently stay in the fight, falling behind all those other melee, especially sub rogues who simply just had more efficient defensives for surviving into deep dampening. With a buffed defensive kit, Windwalker Monks are definitely in the conversation for the best overall melee in the game, especially now in solo shuffle, which is why we're moving them up to the S tier since our last update. Joining Windwalker Monk on the S tier is Unholy Death Knight, who's seen the largest jump in ranking since our last tier list. The Death Knight class as a whole saw some pretty significant changes in the 1.5 patch. For Unholy, part of this rework included shifting damage away from pets and to the Death Knight themselves. Death Coil saw a pretty substantial increase with its PvP modifier going from 18% all the way to 90%. This came with a pretty big buff to Clawing Shadows. And what's important to note here is that both of these are ranged attacks. And as we all know, having high uptime as a melee and solo shuffle isn't always possible. So buffing the biggest ranged damage source for Unholy is part of its upward mobility. The only thing that still might gatekeep Unholy DKs is their relatively lackluster defensive kit, which absolutely just gets blasted in deep dampening. But in shorter games where this isn't an issue, Unholy DK is definitely one of the strongest melee in the game currently and well deserving of its spot on the S tier for the solo bracket. Before we cover our melee losers, we're actually including Warriors in our roundup of winners. Well, sort of. Both Arms and Fury saw some pretty reasonable damage increases, most notably to Overpower, Mortal Strike, Bladestorm, and Onslaught with a weird buff to slam that really nobody seemed to ask for. Anyway, despite these buffs, we're still going to keep both warrior specs where they were last time, since they can struggle with uptime in the current meta, which separates them from many of the current high tier specs. Now that we've covered our biggest melee winners, let's take a look at three specs that are moving down our tier list this time around. Now, in what might be the biggest fall from grace since the early expansion, we're moving Assassination Rogue down to the B tier. With an entirely new Evoker spec populating Solo Shuffle and with Holy Paladins being a dominant force once again, Assassination is likely going to struggle in the mid-season meta. Both Paladins and Evokers are quite oppressive to Acerog, having direct counters to Deathmark essentially just shutting down the entire win condition of the spec. Assassination is also incapable of playing Double Vanish, 
and requires a lot of uptime in order to deal damage. This can make it especially challenging into other sub rogues, where assassination definitely struggles in the head to head. And speaking of which, we're also going to be moving Demon Hunter down a half tier since our last update. Last patch, DH was quite comfortable in solo shuffle since the bracket was overpopulated with caster DPS, which Demon Hunters had fewer problems dealing with thanks to their impressive mobility combined with that passive tankiness to spell damage. Now, even though casters are still quite strong overall, Demon Hunters seem to be weaker in comparison to our current S tier melee. So even though DH didn't actually get worse, we think it's simply outclassed at the moment. And for similar reasons, we're also going to be moving Red Paladin down a half tier as well. Now, in case you didn't hear, every hybrid got a bit of a redesign, with increased mana pools and changed some resource requirements on spells. Now, while these changes definitely helped Red Paladin, you have to remember that they also buffed every other hybrid, including Balanced Druids and Shadow Priests, which, as we'll discuss in just a moment, are the true kings of the bracket. So for now, we're going to be moving Red Paladin slightly down to reflect an evolving melee meta where it's currently just outclassed. Now, before we reveal our complete melee tier list, we have a new wildcard award which we're gonna be giving to Outlaw Rogue. There are rumors spreading throughout the tournament scene that Outlaw might become popular in the coming weeks, and this comes just after the 1-5 patch, which buffed all of their damage by 9% and redesigned one of their existing Roll the Bones procs to add 10% additional damage to Blade Flurry. Opinions on Outlaw are definitely varied at the moment, but a considerable amount of rank 1 rogues believe that Outlaw is probably better than Assassination for Solo Shuffle. With some of the best mobility out of any of the melee, Outlaw can have pretty decent consistent damage output, so don't sleep on these pirate cosplayers for the time being, all right? And with that, we have a complete picture of the new melee meta for the middle of Season 2. Expect to see more Windwalker Monks and Unholy DKs in your lobbies as their relative performance is a standout compared to our a tier. Unfortunately, despite a rework in the patch, we don't expect Frost DK to magically skyrocket to Unholy. The current Frost DK playstyle depends on landing consistent AoE setups with external stuns, which means Frost DKs are at the whim of RNG lobbies. With good partners capable of AoE stunning, Frost is pretty strong, but otherwise, it could just be really challenging to play in the solo environment. Now, once again, we think Outlaw Rogue is a true wildcard, but we'll keep it in the B tier for now until there's more data showing that it's truly capable of outperforming assassination. Now that we've gone over every major change to the melee meta, let's announce our three biggest winners for ranged DPS. First up is Augmentation Evoker, which we're placing on the a tier for its seasonal debut. Augmentation is, of course, WoW's first true support spec. Now, as the name suggests, Augmentation is able to directly interact with other players' spells, increasing main stat, duplicating damage and healing, providing defensive buffs, and even having some impressive off-healing as well. And what this spec might lack in scoreboard damage, it definitely makes up for in utility, where it truly lives up to its support role. The downside of augmentation is that even though the spec is good individually, it requires your teammates to carry their load as well. This week's changes included a mix of changes with more nerfs than buffs, especially to healing output, which is what helped define it as a dominant spec in its debut. In any case, we currently think it's well-deserving of its a position and tends to scale well with higher ratings where DPS partners are more likely to carry the damage load. So, despite some nerfs this week, augmentation is still looking strong. And speaking of looking strong, mages should be happy after Tuesday's class tuning, as every spec got some pretty nice buffs across the board, especially Arcane and Fire, who've seen mixed performance throughout the expansion, and these changes definitely helped offset previous nerfs in recent weeks. Frost currently seems to be the best spec out of the three, due in part to some crazy new damage modifiers to Ray of Frost, which turned the spell into an absolutely brutal attack. Arcane's going to be seeing some movement up the tier list this time too, but 
As a fair warning, this spec is still pretty brutal to play in solo shuffle, even for experienced players, since it is the squishiest mage spec. It can be difficult to gauge the true power of classes with steep learning curves, but in any case, if you are an Arcane fan, you should see much better win rates moving forward. Next up is Balanced Druid. We're including Boomkins in our roundup of winners simply because they seem to be doing well despite the recent nerfs. But to step back a little, Balance started dominating the ladder a few weeks ago after some pretty substantial damage buffs to the iconic Moon spells, which, for a while, were hitting like an absolute truck. The fun police at Blizzard were quick to swoop in with their nerf hammers and hit Boomkins with a few damage adjustments combined with a nerf to the infamous High Winds PvP talent which unfortunately seems to have affected both Resto and Feral as well. Now, despite these nerfs, we think Balanced Druids will continue to do well in the Season 2 Solo Shuffle meta. Even though their damage will be lower and their CC will be slightly worse, it was so overpowered to begin with that these changes simply put them closer to other high tiers. Moving on, our next ranged DPS winner is actually Affliction Warlock, but not for the reasons you might expect. Affliction did see some minor changes in the patch, including reworking Deathbolt into a new channeled spell called Oblivion, giving the spec a sort of Void Torrent type effect. Now, in recent hotfixes, Warlock specs also got some minor defensive buffs, and Affliction saw a 230% damage increase to Haunt, which was previously hitting like a wet noodle. But these changes alone are not why Affliction is a winner. Instead, as we're going to discuss in just a moment, Affliction might actually be closer in power level to the other Warlocks. With the recent PvP nerfs to Demo Warlock and with Destro being a shell of its former self, Affliction has become a more competitive option for Warlock players. And if you're a fan of Warlock but haven't enjoyed the Demonology or Destruction meta in the recent years, now might be your time to shine. And finally, our last true winners for ranged DPS include both Hunter specs. Now, just like Survival, Beast Mastery and Marksmanship Hunters saw some damage increases, but we should note that the Cobra Shot and Kill Shot buffs didn't actually go through for BEM. In any case, we're gonna be moving both ranged Hunter specs up a tier since our last update, not only because of these buffs, but also due to the shifting meta where more Affliction Warlocks and Mages mean more food options for Hunter players hungry for raiding. But not all is puppies and rainbows for ranged DPS, as we have a few specs that are going down in our rankings. And as we mentioned, Demonology and Destruction seem to have fallen off since our last update. Buried in some hotfixes on June 26th were a few key defensive nerfs to Demonology, including a 50% PvP modifier on Soul Link and reduced effectiveness of Mortal Coil healing. And even though these were technically nerfs to all Warlock spells, they definitely hit Demo the hardest, since the spec is forced to play with an active pet, which now only provides 5% damage reduction with Soul Link. The 1.5 patch also reworked the Demonology Damage Kit, including some nerfs to call Dreadstalkers, which were one of the main damage sources for the spec. But hey, if you're sad about these changes, don't worry about it, because now you can be a Draenei Warlock and customize all your demons. So, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of cool, I, uh, I guess. And before we wrap up ranged DPS, we're also going to make one minor correction to our previous tier list, this time moving Elemental Shaman down from the S tier to A+. And just like some of the other changes we're making today, this simply reflects the evolving meta, where Ellie seems to clearly get outclassed by Balanced Druid and Shadow Priest. We don't want to suggest that Ellie's now just suddenly worse, especially since it was a benefactor to the hybrid mana rework, but for now, we think Elemental has a relative power level lower than the S tier, but it's going to remain highly competitive in the mid-season. Now that we've gone over every major change, let's look at our complete ranged DPS tier list for Solo Shuffle. Despite some nerfs, it seems that Balanced Druid and Shadow Priest are the standout ranged DPS, but are actually pretty close to many of the specs in the A-plus tier, which now include Hunters and the new Augmentation Evoker. Warlocks seem to be lagging behind other tiers slightly, but they are still highly competitive, and unfortunately that leaves Devastation as the worst ranged DPS in the game, which should signal that it needs a major rework, especially since Augmentation is performing so well across all forms of content. 
With every DPS covered, let's wrap things up with healers, the unsung heroes of the solo bracket. As many of you might have guessed, Holy Paladin is the biggest winner in recent weeks, jumping all the way up to S tier after months of just being forgotten down in the wasteland. This comes as a direct result of a major rework to the entire spec in the patch, which included multiple quality of life improvements, such as more consistent healing output, new sources of mana regeneration, and even some new damage tools. Taken together, Holy Paladin quickly rose in representation at the highest end of the ladder, which is having a trickle-down effect across all ratings. In fact, Holy Paladins became so strong that Blizzard had to reel them in with some weekly tuning. July 18th hotfixes included major nerfs to healing output, combined with a substantial hit to passive mana regeneration, and with these nerfs in mind, we still think Holy Paladin is the standout healer here. Now that Holy Paladins have more consistent healing output, they're able to take full advantage of their impressive defensive toolkit, where they have some of the best externals out of any healer in the solo bracket. So even though some Paladins might already be spreading doom and gloom after recent hotfixes, we still believe Paladins are well positioned to be the best overall healer in solo shuffle. Now with that said, there is one healer that has silently crawled its way up in the ranks and might actually be Sleeper OP. And if you haven't guessed by now, it's Holy Priest. Yes, even though we ranked Holy Priest highly during our last update, it still seems like they are wildly underrepresented compared to their true power. After getting some pretty substantial buffs over the course of the season, Holy Priest is already one of the best solo shuffle healers thanks mostly to its mana efficiency, where it has the potential to outlast any other healer. With its wide array of highly efficient defensives and with a super bursty damage profile, Holy Priest representation doesn't currently capture their true potential. Unfortunately, we have one healer going down in the rankings this update, and if you've been keeping up with the meta, you probably are going to know who it is. If not, it's Discipline Priest, who we're moving down to the B tier this time around. Now, unlike Holy Priest, who have pretty low representation across the board, Disc Priests are really well represented in brackets below Duelist. But as you might have noticed, this representation tapers off the higher we go in rating. Now, while not entirely indicative of a spec's true performance, this representation dip should indicate some structural problems with the spec as it goes up in rating. Now, on the bright side, Penance received a 15% buff in weekly tuning, so there are glimmers of hope for the spec that once reigned supreme in the solo bracket. But in any case, until Disc starts showing better numbers at higher ratings, we think it's clearly on the lower end of healers in the bracket, with Holy being the new flavor of the month priest spec. And now to wrap things all up here, let's take a look at the complete healer meta. Despite their recent nerfs, Holy Paladins are still performing pretty well but are challenged by a wide array of high-tier healers, with both Resto Shaman and Preservation Evoker still seeing impressive results. Both Monk builds are performing well at every single rating bracket, and we're consolidating them into one on the A-plus tier. Right now, the highest-rated Monks in both regions just happen to be Fist Weavers, which shows some potential for the spec despite some big nerfs that happened a few months ago. Unfortunately, Resto Druid seemed to be lagging behind slightly, and now with even more evokers in arena, Druids are going to continue to struggle with offensive dispels and low passive mana regeneration. As always, these tier lists are a collaboration with rank 1 and professional players. Your mileage may vary depending on rating, but we try to adjust our data to reflect every single bracket. And with that in mind, we want to hear from you. What do you think are the sleeper OP specs in the new patch? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in gaining 400 rating risk-free this season, check out the discount link below. Skillcapped is the only place that promises results with our rating gain guarantee, ensuring you will hit your rating goals while using our website. Not only are you going to get access to thousands of videos, but also you're going to get access to rank 1 player support in our revolutionary Ask a Pro forum. Every season, Skillcapped helps players just like you reach their potential. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below for an exclusive discount offer just for you. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we'd like to thank you all for watching, 
and we'll see you soon.